The complex fill tool is a tool that creates multi-stitch line elements so it can contain either satin stitches or fills or decoratives, lots of options to kind of fill that shape. But it it's used to create a shape. That shape can contain holes. And with the traditional input method, it is done by tracing the outline, adding any holes if there are, and then put your entry point, your exit point, and your stitch direction. And it has one stitch direction, and then you can move on. If you want, you can edit in more stuff later, but the traditional input method is a very quick way to create more complex shapes with holes with a single stitch direction. To look at this, I'm going to open fills.bmp, which is loaded in the graphics folder that's loaded with your software. And then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to select the complex fill input method, the traditional input mode. And if you click and hold for a half a second, you see that flyout. It's the first one in the flyout, and it is the one with one stitch direction going across it because you get one stitch direction and then you're ready to move on to the next fill. I'm going to start with this square. And you start with left clicks and this because it's all right angles. Everything is a left click. So you trace around clockwise or counterclockwise does not matter. The only thing I'm not doing, I'm not putting in, I'm not coming in and closing this shape. I, I just put in this last piece up here. When I hit enter, it will close that shape automatically. Now, if I look at my cursor, it is asking, are there any holes? I don't have any holes. If you look at the bottom as well, it will ask for you to input the hole or hit enter to input the entry point. I don't have any holes in here, so I hit enter. And now it switches to my entry and exit. So I say I want to start here, I want to end here, and now it's asking for the stitch direction. And you can put in whatever stitch direction you like. We'll talk about what's a good idea and a bad idea in a minute. Once I put in that stitch direction, I am done with this element. You can see that it populated with stitches. It's got the underlay in there. All of those are from the defaults. If I go into 3D, you can see that, yeah, that is large enough. It is being a fill stitch type. My angle is 90. That's what I put in for my stitch angle. My density is 3.8. All of those are kind of those default properties. So let's look at another shape. Let's look at this shape. So I'm going to do this again. I'll come in. And I'm holding Alt to constrain those angles. I kind of missed there, didn't I? If you miss, hit Backspace, and you can put in the, the point as you need to. I'm going to zoom in so I have a little better shot at this. And then for that last leg of it, I just hit Enter, and it will close that shape automatically. Again, it's asking for a hole. I don't have any holes, so I hit enter to go past that. I'm going to give it my entry point, my exit point, and then I'm going to give it a stitch direction. I'm going to do something like this. So now let's talk about stitch directions and how do you choose and what's a good idea and what's a bad idea. When deciding stitch directions, some of the things that I think about very first are the grain of the fabric. If the grain of the fabric is vertical, which most knits are, most, there was a period of cross grain, so everything was sideways, uh, but most knits have a vertical grain. If I have stitches that are vertical and my grain is vertical, they'll fall into that and I'll get kind of ragged edges and they won't look very clean and they'll kind of fall into that fabric a little bit more. So I try to avoid that. I pretty much I pretty much just try to avoid vertical stitch direction, especially with a fill, if at all possible, because most likely it's going on something with a vertical grain. The other thing that I think about, if it's sewing on stitching that's already there, if it's sewing on another layer, 
of fill or satin. If the stitches line up, they'll fall into each other. If they go at 90 degree angles, they'll pull gaps in each other. If they go at just slight angles, that kind of gives you the nicest, crispest edge that you can get. So that's what I that's what I shoot for, just slight angles to things that have been done before. If I'm at a very different angle than the grain of the fabric, that tends to be fine. It's it's when things line up really hard with the grain of the fabric that I have issues. The perpendicular pulling of stitches, that tends to happen more just with stitching on top of stitching as opposed to stitching on top of fabric. Other things I want to consider, the shape of the element itself and how those needle penetrations define that shape. So I'm going to move these up into this gray area. I'm going to make them a gray so they kind of blend in. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to show the expanded points. So toggling expanded points. I'm not editing the expanded points. I'm just looking at where all those needle penetrations fall. If I look at this first square, the sides have a lot of needle penetrations on them. The top and the bottom don't. They have a needle penetration every 40 points because that's my stitch length. If I go at a slight angle, I get more needle penetrations along the edges, and that actually gives me a cleaner look. So if I can go at an angle, I typically will, just because it gives me more needle penetrations along the edges and it just cleans things up. Now let's go back into 3D and let's look at this one. So here, we've got a slightly different color right here and it shows up on screen. And what's happening is as it fills, it hits this area and then has to travel up and fill back, meet back up with itself, and then sew this area last to exit up here. So this area actually is sewing a different direction. It comes back and then moves forward again. Is that bad? Maybe, maybe not. Um, with really complex shapes, shapes with holes, you can't avoid coming back and meeting back up with yourself. It's just completely unavoidable. What happens is you're changing the direction of thread so the light hits the twist of the thread a bit differently and it can create a slightly different sheen or a slightly it, it almost looks like a slightly different color that depends on the thread it depends on the color it depends on the light um, sometimes that's not avoidable a lot of times you won't notice it occasionally you will and if i can avoid it i will the other thing if you're meeting back up with yourself and sewing back towards something that's sewn before you can push a ripple of material. Now, good backing, good underlay can alleviate that issue, but occasionally, especially with really squishy materials, you may see a little bit of a gap that's formed there, right, where it kind of tries to meet back up with itself. So if that's the case, you can always add some fill overlap lines under the advanced settings, uh, but typically I try to attack that first with underlay, second with my stitch direction, third with my entry and exit points, and then if all of that fails, I'll go look at those fill overlap lines. So if I have a shape like this, is there a way for me to get around meeting back up with myself? Sometimes, yeah, there is. If I hold a pencil up to the screen, so pretend this is my pencil, what I will often do is I will move this little bit by little bit and see is there an angle that I can get where I don't close something off. So this one I could go all the way through. So just by changing my stitch direction, I can sew this all the way through without cutting an area off and meeting back up with myself. If I change that to where I'm cutting off an area, this 
something like right here, I have two areas and that's now cut off, then I know that I'm going to have to meet back up with myself. So a lot of times I'll hold a pencil up to the screen, I'll move it across the form, see is there is there an area that is going to be a problem? Can I find a stitch direction that I can get away without doing that? And some shapes, absolutely. I can find a stitch direction that'll work. Other shapes, Nope, there's no stitch direction that I can do in here that I won't have to meet back up with myself somewhere or a shape with a hole. So let's do this real quick. Let's grab that blue again and we'll digitize this shape. So I'm gonna start with the left click. I'm going to digitize around the form. right clicks the whole way. I'm not going to close that back up with another click. I'm going to hit enter and it will close that shape. And now it's asking, do I have a hole? This time I do. So I'm going to just digitize around this, starting with the left click, hitting enter to complete that hole. And now it's asking, do I have another hole? If you do, great, go ahead and do it. If you don't, hit enter to get past it. You can put in as many holes as you'd like. Once past it, I can put my entry point, my exit point, and yeah, there's not a stitch direction I can do that would get me through a fill with a hole without meeting back up with myself at some point. It's just not possible. Do I worry about it? No, not really. I know I'm gonna use good backing. I know that I'm going to have good underlay, and so it's going to stabilize that area before I ever sew over the top of it, so I'm, I'm pretty okay with this. If I find that I am getting a little bit of a gap right, let's see if I can make this happen. So right there, right where it starts to meet back up with itself, that's where you might see a little bit of a gap. If you're using good underlay and you're using good backing and you're still getting a little bit of a gap, you can go into the advanced properties and you can change your fill overlap lines and that will just increase a couple of extra lines of stitching where a fill meets back up with itself. So that's how you create a fill. You create the outline, hit enter, create any holes, hit enter, entry, exit, and with the traditional input method, just a single stitch direction, and you're done. The fill's created, the tool is still selected, so if you wanna go create another fill, you're ready to go. When deciding the stitch direction, we know that we're going to avoid the grain of the material. We're going to avoid the stitch directions of anything that is being sewn on top of or anything that's going to be sewn later. So another thing to think about, if you have a fill that has lettering going on top of it, a lot of lettering has a vertical horizontal stitch direction. So if I give my stitch direction a little bit of an angle, I'm going to help that lettering be a little bit cleaner on top of that fill, just because it's going to fall at a bit of an angle for that. One other thing to consider when digitizing fills. We've talked about keyboard shortcuts before. If I don't like a point, I can hit backspace and I will delete the last input point and I can put it in again. I can hold Alt and it will constrain to 15 degree increments. I hit enter and I complete that shape. It's asking for a hole. And if the phone rings and I forget what I'm doing or I hit escape, that will deselect the tool. Well, by deselecting the tool in the middle, I now have a shape and it has absolutely no stitches. So it will show up in design shop. But if I try to send this over to the machine, it has no stitches at all. If that happens to you, you don't have to start over. You can simply start with these editing tools and pick up where you left off. If you need to add a hole, you can add a hole. If you wanna start with your entry and exit point, do that, entry, exit, stitch direction, and now I have stitches. Now if I send it to the machine, it will have something to sew. So if you have things that look great on screen, you send it over to the machine and there are no stitches, there's nothing there, even for just an element, it could be something like this where I have the shape, I just need to, <laughs> I hit escape and I need to go back in and add my entry and exit and my stitch direction. 
but those are your complex fills traditional input method it can be very fast with just outline hole entry exit stitch direction move on to the next thing